Good morning. Dobre utra. Ni hao, etc. I don't know the other languages. So I'm going to be talking um, about a project that's ongoing with the BRICS countries um, in the area of corporate risk management. I only have a few slides, and then I can make some comments about the sample selection, actually, on where we're going with this. So uh, this is joint work with Sassy Gopalan, who was mentioned, I think, briefly in our discussions yesterday. Uh, he's now in Singapore. So he's going to cover the Indian angle of, of things for us. Let's see. Okay. Get a second title here. Uh, my subtitle, Research Proposal Project Outline and kind of an outreach to uh, EY, actually. Um, so the project is, has been ongoing. We're in the process of launching, I hope, uh, maybe early next spring, the actual survey. So the, the corner piece of this is a survey that we're leading up to. Uh, we spent a lot of time with a lot of RAs and students kind of getting it to the point where we selected a sample. We've been cleaning the data, developing a questionnaire. And that's where we stand today. So uh, I'm trying to be very meticulous in my process because it's the type of thing you can only do once and you want to do it right the first time, the one and only time. So that's, that's why I've been uh, nursing this for a number of uh, years, actually. Okay, what is CRM, Corporate Risk Management? So I thought we'd uh, just put that up here. And it harkens back to traditional notions of risk. I'll give you one example exchange rates. So in some cases, they don't, they're not volatile because they're pegged, but you could see there's political risk underlying that. But in other cases, if you have a free-floating currency, there's volatility. It's a symmetric risk, as opposed to a one-sided risk where there's no upside, like an insurance problem, right? The building explodes or it does not explode. If it does not explode, there's not a huge upside. It's, it's good news. If it does explode, <laughs> that's what you're worried about. That's kind of an insurance problem. So I come from finance. So the type of risks we worry about when we talk about corporate risk management are these two-sided normal volatilities, exchange rates, interest rates, and so on, not so much the interest side of things. I notice it's very cold in the room. I see <laughs> Kelly's kind of shivering. The Hong Kong weather is also getting to me. Canadian somehow. Uh, I've broken it up into two levels. So in my subtitle, I had challenges and opportunities. So a little bit about the challenges, and then I'll frame the opportunities in kind of my reaching out to EY here this morning. So a little bit of background, uh, and I'm going to talk about emerging market countries versus DM, so developed markets. But really, I'm talking about BRICS versus a benchmark country, which in this case will be the US. Because it turns out that the literature, at least in finance, that talks about corporate risk management is very much centered on the US case. That's what we know a lot about. That's where our knowledge of corporate risk management comes from. Uh, the ambition is to look simultaneously at the BRICS countries and do a, a compare and contrast within the com those countries, but perhaps more importantly, with the US, being the DM versus the EMs. Here's a claim. Uh, emerging market firms face more risks than de uh, developed market firms. Briefly, why? But that's still to be determined in some sense. But implicitly, I would think that it's more risky. And I bring in the second or more fundamental notion of risk, which is a kind of Knightian uncertainty, where if risk in this type of volatility are known unknowns, so I don't know what the exchange rate's going to be, but I know that exchange rate is a risk factor. The unknown unknowns goes deeper. Say, well, I don't even know what the factors are, let alone a distribution that might describe how those factors evolve. So it's the unknown unknowns get added in, in here. So I have a little write-up that I want to give to uh, some of our EY people. Um, but think about it. If you're trying to do risk management within an emerging market con uh, context, and you think about things like derivative contracts, well, that's a notion that's well established in developed markets. But you can certainly run into problems like First of all, do these markets even exist? 
do derivatives exist, let's say, in China or Russia and so on, for the particular risk you're trying to manage? And if they do exist, what is the liquidity? What is the ability to find counterparties in these markets? And if you do find a, a counterparty, can you trust the counterparty? There are additional notions. You never can, but there are certain systems like clearing houses in some markets that take away some of this counterparty risk for us. What happens if there's a dispute? Right? Then there's judicial risk that gets added to the picture. And how does that get resolved? So just briefly, we could say that there's an extra component or layer of risk that's more fundamental than the risk itself. Now, again, this is a little bit of a claim. If a company, a f I'll just call it a firm, is coming out of a developed market with good access to derivatives and other risk management techniques, it's not just about derivatives. That might give them a competitive advantage to go and play in emerging markets relative to those emerging market uh, domiciled firms. And vice versa, if you're an emerging market domicile firm, you're trying to play in the developed markets, you might not have that same access. So it, it does enter into an area of competitive advantage or disadvantage. So I try to illustrate that here, to circle a few things. So we could think of where is the firm domiciled? Is it in an emerging market, a developed market? And so we love two by two matrices. And the second component is, where is it operating? Where is its market? Is it emerging market or developed? So there's the two by two. And I was thinking in terms of, well, what are the challenges then of the risk, the risk man management question? So if you're domiciled emerging, you're working in an emerging market, maybe those challenges are quite high back to these ideas that there's, there are no unknown unknowns in addition to the known unknowns and so on. The rest is just a mixture of these things. Okay. <clears throat> so that takes us to this point, the project that I described to you, which is a global survey, global defined here amongst the BRICS and the U.S., so essentially five countries, as representing kind of trendy definitions of what an emerging market is and DMs. But it's not only trendy. I know yesterday we had a lot of other monikers thrown up here, but I think I'm going to stick with this one because it's such a big swath of the world market. Okay, the opportunities. So I frame this as understanding the value chain, both academically and from an advisory. So I'm starting to think, how do we reach out here and maybe get um, EY to weigh in the question? How do we develop something that's going to be relevant not only in a purely academic context, but also give some intelligence to EY and its um, activities. So I'm thinking of a value chain. I'm trying to think not very narrowly about corporate risk management like derivatives. That's a very n narrow definition. I'm tr trying to think much more broadly. How does a company really view all this? How is this adding value potentially, if it is, to its activities? So. First, you, you want to think in terms of identifying the risks. So what are the possible outcomes? I mentioned like the plant explodes or doesn't explode, or the exchange rate changes in your favor, against your favor. Those would be the outcomes. What's the probability? Things like heat maps that you might have heard of. So that's one link in the chain. So if these are the risk factors facing a firm, how much, ex how much exposure does a firm have to those risk factors? A lot of risk might be not relevant to a company, whereas others are very relevant. So that's the second stage of identification. Right, so if we say the risk factor is foreign exchange, how much exposure do you have to foreign exchange? Notions of value of risk can be brought in here. Essentially, it's simply a way to measure that exposure. Then what do you do about it, if anything? So there's a whole branch of the finance literature that's saying, well, wait a minute, it might not even add value to manage risk. Unless you can ch change the expected stream of cash flows, you're not really adding anything. You might actually be destroying money. If you're spending more money to manage risk than the, the value that management is, forget about it. Okay, so I, I've actually skipped that step here. So what do you do, or how can you address this? I've just put in a few. There are 
various techniques, natural hedges. So actually in Yekaterina's presentation, we could, there was this notion of managing risk by going internationally or spanning both Russia and China. So in our context, we call that natural hedges. Corporate diversification, derivatives, there are others. How would that activity be organized within the company? In-house or, I was going to say outhouse, but it's, it doesn't have a good connotation. In-house or outsource. Uh, tactical implementation. Right, what products are you going to use? Is it going to be derivatives, some other uh, way to manage the risk management? Some of the markets and the trades, right? So all this can be broken up into these different stages. How do you actually carry out those trades? The support, the monitoring, the information systems. How well is this process performing? Some notion of benchmark performance against that, those benchmarks. Correction mechanisms and so on. What is the policy? So all this should be a reflection of a certain thought process that gives you a policy and then an implementation, not just some few guys in a team in an office kind of goofing around with stuff. Okay. And all the way down to governance, right? So there's an integrated value chain that I think um, is a broader question than just, oh, how do I use derivatives? The questions, right? So I mentioned a survey. The survey is still, uh, is like 80% developed, there's still room for some input. But the, some of the types of questions, right? What are the relevant risk factors? So these harken back to the value chain. Right? What are the relevant risk factors? So if I approach a firm and say, well, are you exposed to foreign exchange rates or interest rates? They're very uh, short here. Interest rates, commodity prices, equity prices, uh, credit spreads, and so on. How do these things affect your company? The earnings, the cash flow, the stock price. Right? So these could be very different answers in emerging markets than developed markets. They could be much more dramatic. There could be an amplification of these risks on company performance. How much exposure does your firm have to these factors? So you see the symmetry with the previous slide. How much do you keep and how much do you shed through corporate risk management and why? How much value is created in this process, right? So what are the benefits to corporate risk management and what are the costs? So what's the net benefit? That would be the value of creation or potentially destruction in the process. What are the methods that you're using, if any? And then it becomes, there, there's more of an advisory angle that I think might be useful to somebody like EY. What is the accessibility, the existence of the markets, the pricing, the liquidity, those issues? Are these markets or, or services more broadly, are they available within the local emerging market? Or do you need to somehow access the other markets from abroad? That's not quite as successful. And how could this be improved? Right, so I think uh, EY might have some opportunities here. Talent, right? So talent was a big word on the, uh, the word cloud yesterday. Is it talent in the local market, the professionals, are they available? Is this well developed within country? If it's not well developed, that's probably because the market is not well developed, but it's, it's endogenous, it goes both ways. How could that be improved? Overall, the quality of support services. So how good a job does, let's say, EY in helping companies develop the talent or overall develop that value chain? And other questions of interest, so your suggestions uh, as needed. So. That's pretty much it. The reaching out is this. We're about to conduct the survey. The survey will be administered, so let me tell you more about the sample. Uh, what we've done is looked at all listed firms in the five brick 
BRICS countries plus the U.S. From those, we randomly selected 200. We used a stratified selection process where we stratified by firm size and industry. We wanted to have a, a random sample in the end that's more or less reflective of the general population. So we actually did a statistical test of differences between the included and omitted firms and they find that they're statistically indifferent. So that's where we stand. We've, in, we've spent a lot of time with students working on those 200 firms in each country, cleaning up the data, trying to find who do we send this survey to. This is very important. Who are the top executives? So it sounds simple. It's actually with the data we're using, it's been a, a little bit tricky. So we have that sorted out. We're working on the survey itself. And as I said earlier, we want to launch that maybe in March, right, depending on how things go. And our thinking, Sassy and I were thinking that if the perhaps cover letter had the EY logo, if this became kind of an EY sponsored survey, I think our response rate might be elevated uh, than if it's just Professor Mackay and Sassy go and sending this thing out but to be determined. Anyway, so it's just a thought. By the way, notice that yesterday EY was, I think, for the fifth and sixth year, uh, recognized as the top professional services firm in, in the world. I don't know if you guys saw this. I saw it on the, on the internet, so kudos on that. And I think that's it. That, that is it for my presentation, so short presentation. Uh, so I don't have results, but I ha we're getting close to launching the survey, and um, maybe there's scope for collaboration. I see Agnes. I'm looking at Agnes. <laughs> Good morning, Agnes. So I'm done. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, questions? So Peter, so I really think that there's something interesting here. You're getting on here. I hope so. Oh, something I noticed from your two by two is that the level of analysis would be very important, right? Are you serving people at the global level? Or are you looking at people at the subsidiary level? Because for a global company, yeah. uh, you might simply manage emerging market risk by diversifying across dif different emerging markets. Yeah. You have the scope where um, even a catastrophic loss in one market would not necessarily affect your operations globally. But for a smaller, more focused firm, mm -hmm. and if you're operating mainly in one market, it could have huge implications. Yeah. So I was wondering how you well, look at I that. I think there, there are two points to that. One point is the reason, I said we're looking at listed firms and there's a reason for that. Obviously we prefer to have listed and private firms. We're using listed firms because then we can match it up to their publicly available data on their sales, their balance sheet and so on without having to ask them Right. Well, how big are your sales and so on, which we might not even get if you're asking a private firm or they might not even have it. Uh, so that's one way. So if using that technique, we will be able to identify, even if they don't tell us, we'll be able to identify that they're actually globally active or only domestically active. But that, that's certainly a good point. Um, there was another point to it. Oh, uh, part of the questions will be how do you manage risks? Right, so I mentioned, uh, I had the word up there, diversification. So if they say, well, we are globally diversified, then they can check that box. Or actually, we're, the way we set it up right now, we're asking for percentages on things. All right, so how much of your sales are domestic? How much are global? So that too will help us uh, identify it. We're trying to make the survey as quantitative as possible. Uh, so if I just ask you, hey, um, do you see, is your company global or domestic? And you'll say, we're global. That's informative, but it's not very precise. So we're trying to say, okay, let, tell me what percent of your sales are international. So hopefully that gets to it. But you're right. Uh, the, my two-by-two two kind of implied that there are strictly domestic and strictly, uh, you know, DM and, and EM are fully sorted out. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, uh, there was a question from the, the back. background. 
Hello. Uh, th thank you for your presentation. First of all, it was a wonderful deep dive in risk management. Um, um, what I want to ask uh, here is that uh, we I don't see here that we speak about uh, institutions which actually have a deep influence on risk on emerging markets. Uh, what I mean here that uh, in this research, it's like a, a, a comment here, yeah? We have to speak about new ins institutions, international institutions like a New Development Bank of BRICS, whose actually one of basic role is to mitigate risk and to um, actually interfere in this scheme. So uh, my question is, are you going to uh, look at uh, the risk management and its influence by uh, the new development bank of BRICS in this uh, scheme, actually? I hadn't thought of that, that bank. Um, I guess our approach is more uh, disaggregate, it's to not interview, but survey individual firms at a point in time. We want the survey to go out, go out simultaneously to all 200 companies in each one of the BRIC countries. Of course, that's just going to be a one-time snapshot. Um, now, are you suggesting we have a question that mentions the BRICS bank? Uh, because if we start mentioning specific institutions, we might say, well, for Brazil, there's this, that, and the other thing, and, and so on. So um, we're trying to, we want to administer the same survey. We want to be very, very uniform in the survey, which means it's going to have to be more generic in a sense. That it, the same questions I ask the people in Russia have to be suitable for asking in Brazil and India and so on. So it has to be quite high level and not too institutionally specific, at least in terms of the, uh, the preset questions. Maybe some open questions. One of the things I'm curious about is that in emerging markets, uh, the ownership structures are often characterized by business groups with a, with a, a majority shareholder owning uh, a shares and a, having a cross-holding structure amongst a group of different firms. Mm -hmm. So I, I sort of, uh, one of the things I'm curious about is how much of the risk management for the majority shareholders are occurring within the group and how mm -hmm. how much uh, sort of partnership is is being done between the the companies in the in business groups and so I'm just wondering if you have any strategies for uh, f yeah. uh, finding out that that sort of partnership role I hadn't I had actually not thought about that until now but I think if we're going, we're dealing with the listed firm, that should be pretty high up in the pyramid of the firms. Um, so I guess we need to ask them to answer for that level of aggregation. Uh, I don't think we'd be asking different components of the same firm, you know, what do you think about this? And so we want, we want to get one company level analysis. Now, Part of that, again, the, the, one of the questions will be, here are the different methods of risk management, including diversification. So I would lump that, I guess, into corporate diversification. But again, it's not going to, I don't think the point of the survey is to go into a lot of <clears throat> detail. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of a first brush survey and if we I think if we try to anticipate too many eventualities now maybe this is one that should be thought more but if we try to cut it up too much about well what about BRICS Bank and so on um, we might lose some of the respondents and I'm concerned about getting I'd rather get a high response rate on rather basic questions than a very low response rate because of the questions got too complicated. We're trying to keep it just like a two-page survey. So, so just to yeah. follow up, so, but, so what you're focusing on is the interaction between the firms and financial markets and how they use yeah. financial markets. Yeah, for, right. So some of the questions I had here, like advisory, we're trying to get a sense of how, how much of an issue is here. 
right? We could say, put it that way. Is risk management a problem for you or everything's hunky-dory? And, you know, tell us a little bit about what you're doing. So it's both about what are you doing and what's the ability to do risk management in your market. Yeah, just carry on from his earlier question uh, on BRICS uh, Bank. Uh, maybe it will be worthwhile partnering with them uh, for the survey because it's very much uh, emerging yeah. markets uh, agenda that they have. But well, what form would the partnership take? I think anyway. it's like giving it much more credibility and, and uh, making it uh, having it having a greater exposure across all of the BRICS uh, markets. Yeah. But I've, we've already identified the sample. So one concern I have is that if we, um, let's say that Skolkovo says, wow, this is a fantastic idea. We're going to do it for Russia with you. Right. Well, then we have the survey being administered or retinkered in a very specific way for Russia. So we get away from a uniformity in the sample selection and so on. Um, I'm, I'm leery of having kind of unknown sample selection problems creep in. So that's why I'm asking, how would the BRICS bank um, support us? Now, I'm not, I'm not throwing out the idea, but I want to know. So right now, the survey covers uh, companies from which countries? BRICS countries. So it covers Africa and covers Brazil. Yeah, Brazil, and Russia. And it will all be done by? That's the plan. That's the plan so far. We got another oh. question. Maybe the last one. Controversial mm -hmm. topic. Okay. As I, I'm total outside of this, like this topic, um, but as I understand, the the same questions they are very well studied in developed markets. So I was wondering if there are any um, hypotheses which you have in terms of what the differences would be, um, emerging markets versus developed markets, and if there are any expectations again hypotheses in terms of the potential differences among the BRICS countries. Um, I guess my main so beyond the BRICS, we're also going to do the U.S. for contrast, asking the same questions. So again, there has to be a certain universal aspect to the questions. I guess my main hypothesis between, let's say, U.S. and BRICS countries would be that actually in the BRICS countries, risk management could be potentially worth more because, they're, first of all, they, they're exposed to more risk, the unknown unknowns, not just the known unknowns. So I think there'd be more potential for value. But on the other side, there may be fewer opportunities to do risk management in those countries. Um, now, I'm not, I'm not sure. These are not the actual survey questions, but they, they are a reflection of how the, the survey questions are structured. So I think you raise a good point that we need to include in the questions a way to sort out those, those differences. Um, now, across BRICS countries, certainly open ideas. I don't really have any preconceptions on that. I guess that would come more out of the data because I th this would be the first attempt, at least that I know of, to try to systematically run the same survey across BRICS countries and then see what the, the differences are. But um, yeah, I yeah. guess my only suggestion would be, I think you've got to be very clear are you contrasting emerging market companies and how they manage mm -hmm. their risk in emerging markets to a mature market, U.S., yeah. how they manage risk generally or how they manage risk in their emerging market operations? Right. Because their risk function globally is very different than how they manage their emerging market country risk. So if you're trying to figure mm -hmm. out the organization's risk management process, that could be different than if you're comparing how they manage emerging market risks within their risk function. 
So I think yeah. we just want to be, as you use the, the mature market as mm -hmm. its benchmark, make sure yeah. that the mature market questioning is, is explicit because mm -hmm. to the point I think someone made it, it could be immaterial the mature market or the emerging market risk for a <coughs> Procter and Gamble, or it's not a good example, but could be immaterial relative to their global exposure versus how they manage emerging market risk versus how a <coughs> South African company manages emerging right. market risk could be quite different. Yeah. That's all. <coughs> Thanks. Yeah, I guess I would stratify. I have a question that makes it clear, are you running a or do you have local differences in how you manage risk if right. you're a global company? Right. Yeah. yeah, thanks. So, and that would be something I think we can follow up. Jonathan Blackmore, who's our EMEA internal audit and risk leader, mm -hmm. uh, is in London, but is South African. So, Ilsa certainly knows Jonathan as do I. So, I think he's still our EMEA uh, risk guy. So, that mm -hmm. might help okay. just as a, as a contact. Yeah. To talk about uh, the, to actually look at the survey questions yeah. and figure out whether there's some collaboration or something. Yeah. We can make that connection. Okay. Yeah.